Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about object-oriented programming. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, thanks for, you, thanks for sharing your knowledge. It is indeed helpful. I have a quick question regarding object-oriented programming usage in JavaScript, especially how frequently you see the especially how frequently you see the object-oriented codebase in both front-end such as React and or backend in Node. I'm also intrigued at how common it is in large scale of code bases. Thanks. Well, uh, I would say it's not so common. Uh, it depends on like some frameworks are more common than others. Some have it actually built into it, but usually it's not so common that you see like object-oriented programming being used in uh, JavaScript land. It doesn't matter if it's Node or if it's um, like React or something like that. Uh, the patterns that are most common in JavaScript, I would say, is a hybrid. Like a, you can almost think of it as a little bit of a mix between procedural programming and functional style, where people favor uh, using functions and lambdas and things like that. And then when like they want to store variables or things like that, they usually do that at the module level. Uh, or th similar sorts of things, it's not so often that you see people actually use classes and so forth. And this is sort of the thing that I, I, I personally, I think it's a little bit of a, well, it's one of those quality things again that I like to talk about, where you say that you know these things, like you see, you use the term, I'm a full stack Node.js, like a full stack JavaScript developer, and then as someone who, uh, what you believe that you know is fairly fairly different from what someone who has worked in uh, like the more traditional backend languages and actually are as I like to say like the real full stack developers they usually have more in depth knowledge than what a full stack uh, JavaScript developer has such as it's the same thing in many cases it's the same deal with Rails and PHP and so forth and so forth uh, the reason being because there's a lot of other con concepts like object oriented programming is not necessarily you know, a backend exclusive thing, but the vast majority of the serious backend developers will know an example. Uh, they will know understand uh, concepts in such such uh, things such as typed uh, languages, where you might have polymorphism concepts or interfaces or inheritance, so like all of these sort of theoretical parts that come in with in many cases with object-oriented programming. And I mean the same thing is in many cases uh, true for uh, functional programming as well, where like there's a bunch of theory behind a lot of the ideas that some other communities sort of just pick up as a pattern, but the people who are applying them may not know so much about the theory behind it. And so when I talk to, exa for example, uh, when I, I speak to, uh, like my one of my most common questions I ask uh, developers who work in JavaScript is uh, like, how do you feel about TypeScript? Because that's of course the big thing uh, for quite a lot of the people who are working in JavaScript these days. And so, and when you ask them about how do you feel like about a type system, like the the thing that they all talk about is, of course, that yeah, it helps me with capturing errors, it helps me with this and that. But you never really have that conversation when you talk to, and when you ask a like a Java developer, a C sharp developer, or someone like that about how they feel about like the type system, or like how do they feel about the language, and like what are the pros and their cons, they usually go into these theoretical areas where they talk about inheritance polymorphism or like the different interfaces that allows them to do things and so forth. Whereas, as I said, like that depth of understanding is not there. It's not there whatsoever in uh, like it's. Uh, it's really very, it's really rare. I mean, uh, you wanted to check how well your TypeScript or like your JavaScript developers understand what like actual like TypeScript has a lot more than just the typing system, for example. But you want to know how well they actually understand it. Just ask them. Can you tell me what a generic is? Most of them have no idea what that is or how to use it whatsoever. And that, as I said, like the reason being because TypeScript or like uh, the object-oriented programming concepts, I mean, I'm not saying that generics are technically not necessarily an object-oriented programming thing, uh, but I hope that you can see my point where the, the adoption of these the more theoretical concepts 
and the understanding of them is a much lower in some communities than there are in other communities and these are usually the communities that have a little bit of as I said this um, they're a little bit older and they're usually the the communities where most of these sorts of Bibles of like uh, software development and practices and what's considered good practices and so forth those concepts came from an era when those languages were and they I mean they are still the Java and C sharp and so forth they're still going strong uh, so they have more of that but for uh, for, yeah, for the JavaScript uh, community, absolutely not. Uh, it's uh, it's actually to the point where I would say that the the thing that most uh, companies struggle with uh, in general uh, when it comes to JavaScript is to scale up uh, the quality of their code base. Uh, that's what I argue. That's the number one problem. Uh, both in front end and in back end. Most of the software developers who work in uh, JavaScript, as I said, have a very weak background in uh, in theory. And it doesn't matter so much at small scale, but it starts showing more and more at the larger scale, like the, the higher up in the, like the, the larger the scale, the more it starts showing. And I find that quite a lot of the issues that you have with JavaScript code bases, doesn't matter if it's no just front-end or if it's back-end or front stack or whatever, uh, as, as I said, it comes from this uh, this issue where like the software developers are simply, uh, they're able to produce code, but they lack the fundamental understanding of how to scale that code and write code at an enterprise level. And so you usually have weaker like almost non-existent to this day I've never not once ever been to a uh, JavaScript code base doesn't matter like uh, which company it has been for where they have had test coverage on day one that reached over say 50 percent as an example because it's just not the way it's done because the theory is not like it, they don't do that it's as I said it's so it's more of the just go in and solve the problem usually that's how JavaScript works and so these patterns like object oriented programming they don't take root uh, like these more uh, these ways of structuring code they, they're sort of irrelevant because most of the community does not have that theoretical background and have never been taught the benefits of how to structure like how to use paradigms and so forth and so forth you usually have a mix match of people who in many cases as I said just follow the, like the basics they have a basic understanding of how to structure uh, code in a theoretical way because I mean in my personal opinion uh, have it, the way that JavaScript developers work is just get it like just get it to work in many cases it's usually the more experienced software developers who uh, and in many cases they are polyglots like they have more than one language uh, that to draw upon experience uh, they are the ones who usually write the best JavaScript code so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, you don't see a lot of object-oriented programming in uh, JavaScript, I would say. It, it does happen. I mean, as I said, it's a little bit like the Wild West. Usually I see that people mix like procedural style or like a functional style and like have module level scopes and so forth. Uh, that's very common. So it's almost like, a, like they just script things at the module level in many cases. And most, uh, I argue, the reason for that is because most JavaScript developers don't have a strong background in theory. Most of them are self-taught. Most of them have, like, uh, might have some background in some other programming language and so forth and so forth. And so you sort of mix a lot of different patterns. But as I said, this is true for mo for a lot, for various communities. Uh, the quality levels of the software developers uh, and their understanding of theoretical concepts. Uh, differ very much from community to community, and so the um, usually the more strongly object-oriented programming languages, that where OOP is like a first-class citizen and sort of the default, uh, such as they say in C Sharp or in Java or so forth, the those developers usually bring in the object-oriented programming thing because they sort of take what they know into JavaScript in some cases but at the same time JavaScript has its own style like its own flavor and this is the flavor so it's not like you have to use object-oriented programming to write good code it's just that in many cases you don't see these sorts of things because most of the JavaScript developers are 
they're so they're a bit weak in the theory so they exper they still experiment with things like they are reinventing things that you know if they've had an intro to how do how to do object oriented programming or like how to do things in other languages in many cases you would see a more consistent way of writing software but uh, as of right now it's a bit like the wild west you you'll see many patterns in uh, in javascript land have a great day